Let's just start with uh, Russian propaganda and misinformation. Curious what you think sort of the role that uh, Russia is playing in this war and whether or not they're, they're successful in their attempts at sort of sowing disinformation. Well, the, the role Russia is playing in the war, obviously, <laughs> that they are the, being the sort of protagonist and the invader, it is harder for them to spin any message than it is for the Ukrainians. And so I think when it comes to whether they're winning the information war, they are certainly outside their borders losing it quite clearly. Ukrainians are a lot more adept. Inside their borders, it's a different story because we don't have Facebook and Instagram anymore. There is a certain amount of censorship and there's still a lot of reliance on uh, television news for information that is all state controlled. The thing is that Russia has perhaps been not as fast to adapt or hasn't been as adept with the newer forms of social media like TikTok, like Instagram, as they were in 2016 when it came to you know, the US election and of course Brexit vote. They had had quite a long time to work out how to crack Facebook and, and address it properly. They're not quite a, as uh, agile when it comes to working out how to use TikTok. Why is that, Alex? I mean, what is it about TikTok that they're not able to sort of crack down on the way that they are with other apps? Well, TikTok is, is clearly a different kind of social media, certainly from Facebook. It, it has some similarities to YouTube. It, it's easier to discover new content on TikTok. You might end up funneled down a kind of content bubble where you're served similar content, but there is always an element of new of discovery where they are serving you something a little bit newer just to see if you're interested. The algorithm serves you that. But the, Russia's intentions in 2022 are different from 2016. In 2016, it was really about sowing division. Didn't really necess necessarily matter which side uh, ended up winning the argument. They were just trying to create an argument. This time around, it's different. Russia tr needs to win an argument to try and make the case that it thinks this war is justified, even though it clearly isn't. It's trying to make a case, and, and that is harder to do than just sort of throwing a metaphorical grenade into a debate and seeing what falls from it. Yeah, and we're seeing a lot of uh, Russian dissidents actually being successful in getting their message out on TikTok. When it comes to sort of uh, getting their message out successfully, uh, we were talking with uh, the, the Deputy Minister of Digital Transformation for Ukraine, and Ukraine's really sort of used social media in a way that we haven't seen in a war before. What's your take on, on their strategy and whether it's working? I mean, there are three things I think they're doing really well. Firstly, the uh, politicians and, and public figures are being very, uh, they're shooting really good quality video that seems genuine. Of course, it is a version of propaganda. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's untrue. It's just they are pushing their particular message. Um, and the, the president, Zelensky in particular, is doing this very adeptly. They are using social media to um, call out public companies that are still doing business in Russia and have had and seem to have had great effect in, in encouraging them to pull that business from Russia. And thirdly, their soldiers and, and citizens on the front line are free to post things, post their, you know, some of their firefights, some of their uh, battles that they're having or experiences from the front line. The Russians aren't doing that. And so we have a more visceral experience of what's going on there. Now, some of that stuff isn't quite true. We don't quite know the full context, but the picture that we're being served seems to land on the Ukrainian side of the argument. Yeah, and how do people parse through uh, whether it is propaganda or not, Alex? I mean, some people are doing it well, right? I know YouTube has sort of put out their own, you know, flags when, you know, it's blatantly disinformation that Russia is sowing. But are other, are other apps sort of doing similar things? So when it comes to determining what from the front line is true or not, I'd really push people towards Bellingcat who have a very good project where they have tried to um, uh, verify uh, crowdsourced videos, videos that are going up on Twitter and, and TikTok and elsewhere and pl place the location j based on the stuff they can see in the background and whether they trust the source or not. That is a good way of seeing if something is true. And also, you know, media outlets that may, might seem slightly legacy, uh, th they will tend to only post things if they can verify it. And that's where stuff like Telegram, which is huge in this conflict, it's very popular in Ukraine, it's very popular in Russia. Some of these old legacy channels, such as the BBC World Service, such as Radio Liberty, Radio Free Europe, um, they have got huge followings that are being, um, that are, big inside Russia and as big as some of the, some of the Russian channels themselves.
Yeah, I, it's it's been really fascinating and just showing how quickly uh, people are picking up on on some of these uh, posts and tweets and others out there. Alex, just finally, um, at, we've we've seen Russia really try to sort of crack down on some of these social media platforms. They were accusing Facebook and Instagram of extremist activities. Do you think any of this is is really a concern for these companies at all if they get charged by the Russian government? I, I mean, when we think about moving forward, uh, do you think it's on their radar at all? I mean, when it comes to their earnings and their exposure to that market, it's pretty minimal. It's probably a rounding error compared to what they do elsewhere. When it comes to free speech, it clearly is a big concern because, you know, it means there's really only Telegram as a way of, of having proper uh, debate and conversation in the Russian market. The stuff that I don't know if you've had a chance to watch Russian TV. I've seen some of the footage and it's mm -hmm. astonishing that the lies that are being peddled by Russian news organizations. Um, and it's quite hard when you're being served that diet then to make a choice to, to find stuff elsewhere, which is even harder to find than it was just a month and a half ago.